Hey, got a feather blade here. He's got about 57 uses on him. We're going to put 58 on today. And I was curious if the C, the C base plate in open comb on my Carve Christopher Bradley razor would be able to handle that blade since it's so old and it's been getting a little picky. I held up this in the photo to remind me that the soap that I have is Tundra Arctica from Saponificio Veracino. I couldn't hold this soap up in the uh, photo because I've got some water on the top of it. It's a truly hard soap and so I do like to uh, soap, uh, put some water on there while I gather up my gear. So it's just a few minutes worth of pre-soaking. Now the instructions on the website for that company say to pour boiling water on the soap and let it sit there for a little while before you shave, but that's that's not me. All right, that's a little too inconvenient for me. Okay, so I uh, also have this uh, Samoog. I've only used it one other time. It's the C5 uh, Torga, and it's the premium grade boar hair that they have. It's kind of a short and scrubby, stubby kind of guy, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it develops. Obviously, I don't know how it's gonna work out yet because it's so young boars change dramatically in the first from use number one to use number 20 there is often a very big difference okay so here's my feather and this is my little uh, signature on it to show that it's the same blade over and over for some skeptics out there and then here's the c open comb from carve of course, this is the brass version. Some people say they went with the stainless steel because the brass has a smell to it. To be honest, I never noticed until somebody said something. And I still didn't notice until I got it right up under my nose. But I'm a shooter. I've been shooting since I was a little kid. And so the smell of brass is an awesome memory for me. And so I enjoy that. But I don't smell it unless I put it right up on my nose. All right. So we've got that loaded up and so let's um, get this guy wet so that I can, sh uh, I like to make sure it's got a good amount of water in it so that I can then shake out a consistent amount of water. All right, so we'll take and uh, pour off the bloom water here. Someday I might start incorporating that. Sometimes I do pour that into a bowl and use it as a part of my lather, but it's fine. Shake out a good bit of the water here, and let's load up. I did soak this guy for a long time last night, all night. I didn't mean to, but I did. All right, let's, uh, I can't remember a good load time for this soap, so why don't we do uh, 40 seconds? Uh, 30 seconds, I started at 15, so we'll stop at 45. This soap did have a, a good bit of backbone, I'm sorry, the brush, when I first used it. The tips were comfortable, and so it wasn't prickly or anything like that. But you could feel the backbone. So as this guy opens up, as he splays open some more, as the tips split even more and we get more soft hairs, I'm, I'm thinking this is going to be a really nice brush. And that is 45 seconds. So that's what that looks like. And it looks totally different for each brush and soap. Some uh, brushes kind of hide the lather a little bit. I am going to rinse off the tub here. All right. Water at my place here is hard and it's cold. I will bring in a little bit of warm just to, uh, no, actually the brush doesn't need it. If I have a thick, dense badger brush, I like to bring in some warm water to, um, uh, to, uh, help to clean out the brush a little quicker. Cold water is a little slower. All right, so, oh, I may bring in some uh, warm water out of habit just to counter the cold so that when I'm rinsing, it's lukewarm instead of freezing. This is a, uh, a resin type handle. It's got a, almost like a watermark with the Samoog logo on the bottom as well. The C5 comes in and I have no affiliation with Samoog, and I bought this with my own money. 
Um, the C5 comes in, I think, horse and silver tip and a, uh, a firmer grade of badger hair. So if you want something really scrubby, look for the IT Extra Torga C5. The C5 denotes apparently the, uh, the wider of the two uh, diameters of the knot. There's a C3, which has maybe a 21 millimeter. This is more like a 24 or something like that. I think it also has uh, maybe a finest badger or something like that. I think there's a mistura, which I believe is the word they're using when they combine uh, boar and badger hair. Never tried one of those brushes. Not sure if I'd like it or not. And right now, I kind of feel like enjoying the attributes of each, you know, in a different way per shave rather than trying to combine. But uh, a lot of people like them. Yeah, this is shaping up nicely. I just put one teaspoon in and already it's looking good. It's a pretty lather. Looks like I'm going to have enough in terms of quantity. The first time I used this, it did kind of kill the lather and that is standard. It's kind of to be expected for young boar brushes. So that's okay. It's really frustrating the first time I used a boar and it killed the lather. And you look like you have a nice brush load of lather and then you start, to, and I did pre-soak I can't remember. I know with this one the other day I did pre-soak it and it still killed the lather. Back in the day I may have not known to uh, soak my boards before use. All it takes is three minutes or so. And so that may have been one of the reasons it sucked the water right out of the lather. But I think this brush has had kind of two long periods of soaking and so I wouldn't be surprised if it kind of jumped into action kind of quickly. It's a stubby handle and I've got big hands. Often this size handle is a little too short, but this little saddle that they've created right here seems to do a pretty good job of giving me something to hold on to comfortably. It's a little more work than a more ergonomic larger handle, but I think it's reasonable. It was definitely a smaller brush when I received it than I thought it would be. Well, this is a good looking lather. Look at those peaks. But it's not wet enough yet. Those peaks tell me I need to keep going. So we've got two teaspoons in it. Put another one teaspoon. Hope you guys are doing well with this virus outbreak. I think it's pretty much affecting the whole world. Keep safe. You don't know how doctors wash their hands? Look that up on YouTube. The standard way I think a lot of kind of regular civilians wash their hands I think could really use some improvement. Especially considering the kind of germs we have, the virus we have floating around right now. Also, it's something fun to do. Um, here, I'll show you right quick. This is what uh, Dr. Oz, um, I was watching Jimmy Fallon the other day, and this is what Dr. Oz uh, instructed him as to how to get a good wash out of your hands, and it's the way doctors are trained to do it, I guess, in U.S. Uh, doctor schools, uh, medical schools. Um, so of course everybody knows something like this and a lot of people might do some kind of finger thing But he said to uh, do a thing where you're rubbing your fingertips on your palms like that and uh, Vice versa and then he called it the motorcycle crank and this we're uh, getting our thumbs really well here Same on the other one and then clasp them together like this and just kind of wiggle and rub to because your finger the backs of your hands don't touch as many things you don't use the back of your hand as much to to touch your face and things like that and so worry about mostly about your fingertips and your fingers and things like that and so and so give it a good rub here and here's the cool thing you do this for a little bit you do this for a little bit and then you do those three motions i showed you and you've kind of used up all the time you need to get a good hand wash so you don't have to sit there and count or sing the abc song or happy birthday or whatever technique you use to make sure you uh, wash your hands for long enough if you just do those, do those motions uh, then you're pretty much you've you, you've done it right 
and so then rinse and go on your merry way. So I've been doing that and uh, you know, thought I'd pass it on in case it's of help to somebody. And as you can see, we have a different lather now. Look at that. He's collapsing in on himself. He looks different than he did a minute ago when I showed you those peaks. I think we're getting into that nicely hydrated uh, zone here. Hopefully the brush doesn't kill it, but if it does, that's okay. Uh, what I can do is go back to the puck for uh, a little bit more loading per, per pass. And that's, that is all right. Oh, that is slick. Whoo, yes, yes. Oh, mm -hmm, nice. Oh, and then you can, I can feel it again when I'm rinsing the water, using the water to rinse my fingertips. I can feel that slickness stick on my fingers and uh, keep, I advise you to do that if you switch soaps a lot because it really helps you to understand the soaps and things like that. I did shower before my shave today, so my, I used a glycerin soap on my face, and so my beard has been cleaned today, which is not typical. Usually I shower after the shave. So I put a little uh, half teaspoon more, so three and a half teaspoons of water for this lather. And this is one of the reasons why I don't pour that bloom water in the bowl, because uh, I don't want to take the time to measure it, and I want to be able to give you guys some objective uh, measurements, not for you guys who are successful at making your lathers. And I'm not saying it's the way to do it or a, even a reliable way to do it, to get it exactly the kind of lather that I'm getting. What I'm saying is, if you're having trouble and uh, you, you're, you just don't quite know what you're doing wrong, then uh, using some objective measurements like this might help you get in the ballpark. Because a lot of times shavers online will uh, say things like, well, you keep adding until it feels right. Well, if you're a new guy, how do you know it feels right? How do you know when it feels right? So I like to try to be objective just to help folks to um, trouble, people having trouble to maybe be able to get to a, the ballpark of a good, a good lather for a good shave. All right, so let's see how this bore brush feels. Second use after a long soak. Well, this is comfortable. Wow, it made a big difference. I don't, and I, I didn't intend, like I said, to have it soak for that long. It is kind of scrubby. I do feel some of that backbone. But almost like it's, it's at the core of the brush, and then I've got this nice softness that's all around that core. And the softness is what, I, is what my skin uh, feels. But the way that softness is held, I, I do perceive the, the backbone. It's very comfortable, and I am pumped. I am excited as far as uh, how this brush is gonna be working. Second use, and it's comfortable and enjoyable. That is great. And the, I kind of expected that because the premium grade hairs um, have done really well for me. That's what's in the uh, 830 um, and the 1305 brushes. And I enjoy those a lot. And so if you like the softness of the tips of the 1305, but you want more density and a little bit more backbone, it sounds like this brush might be the, uh, the right one for you. Uh, but I can't say that for certain because, again, I'm only on the second use of it. So I don't know how it's going to change. But, man, I'm really happy with it right now. All right. Well, I got a day and a half of beard to shave off. And I want to see. This feather is a little tuggy. When you have a blade that you're marathoning, I recommend, my experience was you should shave every day. It's a little more tuggy when it's trying to shave off two days of growth or, you know, more than one day. So 
So this is a little on the tuggy side, but I found in many cases that's only for the first pass. Not, not uh, pain level, just a little bit. It's not, there are definitely plenty of times where I've marathoned a blade and had it be tuggy, but not in a painful way at all. I could just know that it was tugging, but it was also cutting and doing a good job. This was a little bit more uncomfortable than that, but not, not uncomfortable. Yeah, okay, I'd say slightly uncomfortable. I wouldn't want all my shaves to have this kind of first pass. Now, the last time I shaved with this blade, I used my Fat Boy, and it was more comfortable. So, does that mean that's a better razor than this one? Nope. What it means is that the Fat Boy uses a different geometry, or blade exposure, or some other factor like that that makes it more conducive for this blade for my face. So I think what I might shave with, uh, oh, also I've got one and a half days of growth, which is atypical. So I may want to try this same gap again, but just in uh, making sure that I've, I've got one day of growth. But maybe I'll bump it up to the D open comb and see if that one uh, works well with this blade. This is the C open comb, and so that could be, uh, it's probably comparable according to Carve. And I think my experience holds it up as well. Comparable to the D solid bar. And this is much more comfortable, not. Uh, a little tuggy, but it is not in the uncomfortable tuggy range. And I'm getting great slickness from the soap here. This has a touch of cranberry and lichen. I don't know that I can really smell the cranberry, but they put it in here on purpose because it, uh, it has uh, some good qualities, um, medicinal type anti-inflammation qualities or something like that. And I think the lichen... I think they said that does too. And it's mostly agar or agar. I don't really know how to say that, which is kind of a sandalwood type scent. And that's one of my favorite genres. So that's why this is one of my favorite soaps from anybody. Well, the brush does not kill the lather. So it looks like this is going to be a usable brush after just one use, providing you soak it overnight twice I didn't do any fridge soak at all I don't think I need to ever go that far I don't know that it offers any benefits so I don't do that it's kind of a little trend a little fad that's going around I just do a lukewarm water so bristles only all right this lather feels great the slickness was superb during the rinse it, it had this uh, terrific uh, uh, feel uh, buttery smooth slickness not really like a vegan watery type of slickness and then it rinsed fairly quickly and so that's nice too I'm gonna keep a light touch And this is very comfortable. The carve does a great job of holding the blade firmly. Holds it from the bottom as well. And that differentiates it among a whole lot of the uh, other traditional razors that have been around for a long time. They will often uh, bend the blade with the top cap, but they, uh, they think that that bend doesn't really need support from the bottom and it doesn't need it. But I think it gives, uh, for me at least, with the kind of comfort that I like with the um, consistency that I like, it prevents it from vibrating as it moves across your skin because it can't vibrate down like the other kind can. And so I think it gives me comfort, smoothness, and a great cut because of that. All right, now some guys like that audio feedback, so you definitely might, uh, 
I read online, maybe even today, somebody was, they thought that the carve gave an, a disturbing, disturbingly low amount of audio when they were using it. <laughs> All right, uh, rinse. All right, face feels great. No irritation at all. A few hairs right here that I see a little bit of length on, but in general, great cut. So here's the feather, over 50 uses. Some guys don't think they can cut it well after three uses. And I think the point is it just feels different for them and maybe they uh, don't like the way that feels and so then they think it's done. But in fact, I think in most cases, it's still very sharp, very, very sharp and can still give good shaves. Also, there's some guys out there who face lather and uh, and some even who bowl lather and they just get a concentrate on their face instead of a wet, wet lather like I was showing you today. And so then that can, uh, that can't, can't protect you quite as much. And so you're going to get more irritation, things like that. Yeah, feels great. Smell still hanging around me a little bit. I really, really like this, this scent. Saponificio Veracino, if I'm saying that right. I'm really happy with the way this brush has turned out. Let's take a look at this lather. It is, it's light. Notice how it's still got some structure. It is, it's not super heavy. It could probably still use a little bit more water, but I don't think it necessarily needs any. Uh, it's, uh, it's not super dense, but it's, it's got a great, a soft quality about it, a great feel in my hands here. And then of course the slickness is very, uh, very top notch. Don't know that you could get, you know, too much slicker. It's not, it's, I don't know if this is a tallow soap or not. It might not be, um, but, um, uh, but it's not an oily uh, slickness, but it's better than a lot of vegan soaps that just kind of have a watery uh, kind of slickness. They did put some other stuff in there that, to make it really work out well. And so it's kind of light in structure. It's got a, a good bit of air in it, but it doesn't feel that way to your fingers. Uh, with the exception of feeling just the lightness of it. And look, we have a, a boar hair. And again, I'm not concerned with hair loss in my brush uh, until it gets to be about 50 or 60 uses old. But that is a terrific, uh, terrific lather. Love it. So it looks like I had at least three more passes of lather in the bowl. So I'm glad I didn't go for the 45 second load time. And I probably haven't used this soap in two years, year and a half. So it's, uh, you know, that was from a very dry state. Some soaps, when you do that to them, they require you to uh, have a little bit longer load time when you load it when it's really dry. Looks like this one was fine. So this is one of those wooden uh, Parker bowls. I believe it's Parker. Uh, Kingsley. I think it's Kingsley. Some name that sounds like Kingsley. Uh, available on eBay for, I don't know, eight bucks, nine bucks. I just wanted to kind of report in on it. It's doing a fine job. I don't use it a lot. And so I don't know uh, how it's going to shape up after, you know, a hundred uses or something like that. But it, uh, it was a little bit smaller than my puck, uh, a bigger than my puck of SV here. And so I trimmed uh, a little bit, scraped a little bit off like the top surface of the puck and then pressed that into the outside. And then it snugs it up and doesn't move around or anything like that. And, uh, and it's, working, it's working well. And so it's inexpensive, but it seems to be uh, doing a good job. Let's do some post shave. I'm not getting any dryness or anything like that. That's another good thing when you have wet lathers is they have enough hydration to where the, the soap doesn't really act on your face in a, in a drying way often. I uh, do have oily skin, so that I'm sure that helps a little bit, but uh, I do enjoy the wet lathers for many reasons. This is Barrister and Man Seville. It 
and I thought that it would be a fun one to try today. We'll see how it pairs with the sandalwood of the tundra artica. Doesn't really feel like it has uh, alcohol in it. Uh, it's not giving me any sting or anything like that. Let's see here some of the operable relevant ingredients. Oh, it does have a little bit of alcohol. How about that? Witch hazel. Do -do -do. Uh, chamomile flower extract. Calendula extract. And there we go. Some good skin food pieces. So I got a nice, even though it was a little tuggy, it wasn't scrapey on my skin or it didn't leave my skin kind of in a, a tender state uh, because of uh, aggressive blade um, sharpness or edginess because it's, you know, a little bit worn out and smooth. And so I think that's another benefit of uh, finding that smooth point that your blades have. Um, all right. That's a, that's a good scent too. I like that a lot. I think it works together well with the soap. I'll bet, like you, I have discovered something. Or I guess I should say, I bet I've discovered something that many of you guys have faced as well. Where you try an aftershave and it smells great for the first kind of 10 minutes. But then an hour, two hours later, you're kind of getting tired of it. And it's not your thing. You know, I put something on like that the other day. Um, a Reunion by Mickey Lee. Uh, neat uh, green type uh, type scent. Uh, what's the name for that one? Is it? It's not fougere. Uh, can't remember. But uh, it um, neat to smell in the beginning, but an hour or two later, I just uh, it, it wasn't quite what I wanted to keep smelling like. So that's nice. I learned a little bit. So for 30 seconds of loading with a somewhat stiff bore brush, good backbone, very scrubby. It's not so long that the bristles are flexing a whole lot and not picking up. So uh, I'd say it's fairly scrubby because that can affect how long you should load for. Uh, 30 seconds there and three and a half teaspoons of water was a very nice lather with this Saponificio Veracino. Unfortunately, I didn't know enough to record which version of soap this was, and so they do number their bases, like 4.2 beta or whatever, and I didn't make a note of that, so uh, they, they do vary a little bit, and I wish I'd remembered. Well, that was an awesome shave. The scent is terrific. The soap, I am a big fan. The slickness was great. The, uh, the brush surprised me that it was less... Uh, less stiff and backbony. It had changed quite a bit because of that long soak, I guess. Uh, so, uh, like the soak, the uh, brush, and the razor, my face has forgotten about that tuggy first pass and feels great. I will try, I think I'm going to put on my list to try the D open comb tomorrow and uh, see how that guy feels. All right, now I am a happy camper. I'll be smelling Seville for a little while. We'll see how I like that in the long term. And uh, please stay safe out there um, with the virus going around. Um, it'll all blow over uh, at some point. Unfortunately, it may take a while. And uh, uh, do the best to keep your keep yourself safe and you and your family. All right, now, take care. This is Sugar Daddy Shaves. Bye.